So in this chapter we're going to have a look at the stamp tool. Uh, the stamp tool can be very useful. Basically, um, if we're using the pull brush, we get this kind of uh, default kind of smooth um, spherical brush. Um, we can adjust the fall off, but uh, sometimes you might want to use a stamp. So I'm just going to reduce my brush size and I'm going to go to stamp here. So you can basically go to Google and look for images if you like for your uh, stamp, but uh, there's already some presets. So I'm just going to go to the content browser, which I've snapped um, to the side here. Normally it's under window content browser. And I'm going to go to presets, sculpting, sculpt brush presets, and we've got lots of textures here. So I'm going to look for maybe an organic texture. Now. You'll notice we can't drag and drop these. That's because these are presets, but we can go to the texture folder here and we can access the images and we can drag and drop these into the stamp input box. So I'm just gonna go for maybe something like this. I'm just gonna drag and drop that in here. And now I'm using the stamp. So if I draw a brush stroke, you can see that, um, you can see the texture on the stroke there. And we might want to set the uh, spacing, it's quite important. So the spacing is a bit too kind of, initially it was a bit too close together. So if you increase the spacing, you can get more of a kind of, get more of a separation on the stamp. Like that. There's also uh, different draw modes. So by default it's set to freehand, but we can choose a uh, drag rectangle. So in this case, we can actually place kind of uh, precisely where we want the stamp and you can use a mouse to kind of rotate it like that. And then if you let go, that commits it to the model. So that can be very useful. We've got uh, drag dabs. And that's basically, um, you kind of decide where you want it. And then when you let go, it commits it to the model. There's a line mode, so you draw a line and then double click and it creates a stamp along that line. So I'm just going to undo some of those strokes. So I'm just going to go back to freehand mode. Now you'll, you'll notice when I draw a stroke that um, it's kind of always facing the same way. Uh, you can't really tell here, but if I choose maybe something where we can definitely tell the direction, something like this, and I'm just going to draw stamp, you'll notice that all these little scales are um, facing the same direction up. So if we choose the follow uh, checkbox, that's basically going to cause these little scales to follow the direction of the brush. You can see here the difference between this uh, top stroke and this new follow stroke. So these um, scales are basically pointing in the direction of the brush. So that's very uh, important. Another thing to note is uh, symmetry. So if I just go back to drag rectangle, uh, you'll notice that in this instance, because I have symmetry turned on, um, it's kind of doing its job properly, but, but um, if flip symmetry was unchecked, basically, um, these two sides are going to be identical. It's not going to compensate. It's not going to flip this side automatically. You need to uh, check flip symmetry. And then that way, this side is going to be an inverse of this side. So that's another thing to watch. And lastly, uh, the gray value is basically, uh, well, it's quite simple. That's kind of a grayscale value. So if I draw a stamp, um, the white areas are elevated and the black areas are basically um, along the surface, there's no elevation. So if I adjust the gray value to one, I can actually flip that. So now the scales are actually indents, you can see. And if I go all the way down to zero, they're basically elevated. So it's pretty much like an inverse switch. So that's a very basic introduction to sculpting with stamps and uh, thanks for watching.